questioning a president's fitness to serve. Welcome to Faith Nation, everyone. I'm John Jessup. Jenna Browder has the night off. Well, House Speaker Nancy Pelosi is using President Trump's COVID diagnosis and treatment to question the office holder's fitness to serve. Citing the 25th Amendment, she announced legislation that could allow Congress to re remove future presidents from their executive duties. Senior Washington correspondent Tara Mergener brings us that story. The legislation would create a commission to examine whether the president is fit for office and possibly remove him. Pelosi's announcement comes just a day after suggesting the president is in an altered state from coronavirus treatment. During a short news conference this morning, Nancy Pelosi prayed for President Trump's health, then questioned it. We are reminded of the necessity of action by the health of the current president. Fitness for office must be determined by science. Democrats claim the White House is not disclosing crucial details about the president's health. While they've considered invoking the 25th Amendment for a while, Pelosi insists the timing has nothing to do with the election, now less than four weeks away. This is not about President Trump. He will face the judgment of the voters, but he, uh, he shows the need for us to create a process for future presidents. However, that would be quite an undertaking. Section 4 of the 25th Amendment has never been used as it allows other officials, such as the vice president, majority of cabinet members, or such other body as Congress may by law provide. Congress could potentially order the president's removal, but it would take a two-thirds vote in both chambers. The president, who revealed his COVID-19 diagnosis a week ago, had a sharp reaction to the speaker's comments, tweeting, Crazy Nancy Pelosi is looking at the 25th Amendment in order to replace Joe Biden with Kamala Harris. The Dems want that to happen fast because Sleepy Joe is out of it. He insists he's feeling fine and well enough to hit the campaign trail as soon as the weekend. We want to do a rally in Florida, probably in Florida on Saturday night. Might come back and do one in Pennsylvania in uh, the following night, and it's uh, incredible what's going on. I feel so good. The White House physician, Dr. Sean Connolly, issued a statement Thursday giving the president the all clear to resume public engagements as soon as Saturday. The Democrats' bill is largely viewed as a political statement. Congress is not in legislative session, and consideration of the bill is unlikely, let alone votes in the House and Senate. In Washington, I'm Tara Mergener, CBN News. All right, thank you, Tara. Joining us now for more is Julia Manchester, political reporter at The Hill, who's also covering the 2020 campaign. Julia, great to see you. Uh, this measure, Nancy Pelosi says, isn't about President Trump, but the timing here is undeniable on the heels of the COVID diagnosis and recovery. Julia, how do you read this? Well, I do think it's clearly political to some extent. You know, this is coming just before an election. It's on the heels of the coronavirus diagnosis. And this panel that Pelosi is and Congressman Raskin are, you know, positioning it or proposing right now, really, there's no way the panel would actually, you know, this legislation to create the panel would pass, considering, you know, we see the, se the Senate and the White House are currently under con Republican control. However, there is a concern about what the treatment that President Trump has received, what kind of treatment that will have that's had on his mental health. We've seen, you know, quite a bit of erratic behavior, um, for, you know, at least critics would say that from the president recently. I mean, in terms of wanting to go to a debate, having coronavirus, we don't know much about, you know, what has been done for his health is the White House medical team hasn't been 100 percent forthcoming. So it's definitely, I would say, um, political. However, there is concern about the treatment President Trump has received. Julia, I just want to be clear to point this out again. This is framed to address future presidents. We saw President Trump t seize on that by tweeting a warning that their aim is to replace Joe Biden with Kamala Harris. Uh, Julia, could a move like this so close to the election still backfire? You know, I think I'm, I'm not sure because we have clearly seen that early voting has already started across the country. And I think this will definitely be looked at by the average voter as politics being played on Capitol Hill once again. So it's unclear how it will impact voters. However, I will say that I don't think voters necessarily will go to the ballot box with this in mind when they're voting for president and in other down ballot races.
Julia, speaking of voters, Gallup is out with a new poll that shows more registered voters believe they're better off after four years of President Trump than they were at this point under Presidents Obama and George W. Bush when they sought re-election. Your thoughts about that? Yeah, I mean, we're seeing definitely a number of different polls coming out so showing very different feelings and emotions about what's happening right now in the United States. Um, you know, I would say that that Gallup poll, you know, is unique in that it's comparing him to former presidents. But at the same time, it seems to be a bit surprising because we know that other national polls and the majority of other national polls and state level polls would show that a lot of other Americans are unhappy with the coronavirus pandemic and President Trump's handling of that pandemic. And clearly, under former presidents, the pandemic wasn't happening. So that's one um, aspect to point out. But at the same time, I would say that there is maybe some confidence among a significant number of Americans who are happy with the way President Trump has handled the economy pre-coronavirus pandemic and maybe happy with the way he's handling it or trying to handle it in terms of recovery. All right, Julia Manchester with The Hill. We're going to have to leave it right there. Thank you, Julia, for being with us tonight. Thank you. Well, President Trump kicked off his return to the campaign trail with a virtual rally on the Rush Limbaugh radio show. The president took to the airwaves talking about the administration's promises made, promises kept record. He started out by predicting a blowout victory over Joe Biden in November. We just got great polls out of the herd out of Arizona. We're getting them out of Nevada. You know, the real polls, not the fake polls. We're getting them out of North Carolina looking really good. I think Pennsylvania's looking good. Florida's looking great. It's all a big phony deal they have going, Rush, and uh, we're going to win this. I think it's going to be a bigger win than we had four years ago. The president has said he'd like to attend campaign rallies in Pennsylvania and Florida this weekend. Well, our other major story is Hurricane Delta barreling toward Louisiana and bringing, more, uh, bringing with it rather more than 100 mile an hour winds and 11 feet of storm surge. It is now the sixth deadly storm of the season to hit Louisiana in just four months. And debris still on the ground from Hurricane Laura could intensify Delta's destruction. CBN's Ben Kennedy reports. Preparing for Hurricane Delta, which has gotten stronger as it powers toward the Gulf Coast, packing more than 100 mile per hour winds and a storm surge of up to 11 feet as Louisiana prepares for yet another major storm this year. Six storms in just four months. That's, the, that's an oddity. Never seen that before. The state is still recovering from Hurricane Laura, which just hit six weeks ago. We are still reeling from the fifth strongest hurricane uh, to hit the United States of America in, in modern history. Uh, the strongest hurricane to hit Louisiana in 150 years. And to have anything like this coming our way is very scary at the moment. But is this the one that's going to drop that tree in the house? Never dropped it before, but maybe this is the one. Hurricane Delta is expected to be a Category 2 when it makes landfall. CBN's Operation Blessing will move into the area to help those hit by the storm. The greatest need, as always, is volunteers for our teams down there. As far as the families in the area, the greatest need then will be for food and water and proper uh, housing for them, making sure that if the wind is as bad as Hurricane Laura, that we have people in place to do tarping and debris removal. Delta is predicted to make landfall near Lake Charles Friday evening on Louisiana's southwest coast. Parts of the state are under a mandatory evacuation, but some have decided to stay and brace for the worst. Ben Kennedy, CBN News. And CBN contributor Chuck Holton is with us now. He is back in Lake Charles, Louisiana. Chuck, great to see you. Real quickly, just before landfall, uh, what are you seeing right there now? Well, the town is a lot emptier than it was the last time, and I think people learned their lesson after Hurricane Laura. I rode out Hurricane Laura in that skyscraper behind me that's all covered up with plywood. That's because all the windows blew out of it six weeks ago, and they've covered it all up with plywood, but it's likely that those things are going to be blown out again. And I don't know if you can see on the ground here all this debris behind me, uh, John, but this is going to be the real danger once the winds really start to kick up because we're talking about massive piles of debris everywhere around town that's just going to be ready-made projectiles that will be very lethal 
and uh, it's going to be, see, there goes the sign right, right. right now. It's about time for me to put on my helmet. Chuck, we want you to stay safe, so if you do need to clear, just let us know. You, you mentioned that you see it, it's more like a ghost time this time around. Uh, with people having tarps still on their roofs, uh, ha have most of the people cleared out? They have, but, you know, that is the real sad thing, that, that most people have had just enough time to clear out all the furniture and household belongings that got destroyed by the last hurricane and get all new stuff put in, but they still have a blue tarp for a roof. And so this hurricane will likely blow that tarp off and ruin all the new furniture that they just, they just purchased. So this is gonna be a very costly storm, even if the winds aren't nearly as high as they were for Hurricane Laura. Chuck, and real quickly, what kind of preparations are underway uh, for Hurricane Delta, which is now going to be the 10th name uh, storm to make landfall this season? Well, aside from people you know, leaving, getting out of here, uh, the, th there were a lot of organizations that were here in town to help with the rebuilding process. And they had all their RVs to sleep in and porta potties and heavy equipment. And today I saw massive convoys of all that equipment leaving again and getting further inland so that that stuff doesn't end up be becoming just all the more debris in this storm. Well, Chuck, we know you're a veteran of covering hurricanes. We ask you just to be safe. We know that you're going to continue to provide uh, great coverage. So be safe out there, Chuck. Chuck Holton from Lake Charles, Louisiana. Thank you so much. That's the plan. We'll see you. All right. Well, CBN's Operation Blessing Disaster Relief Team is already answering the critical needs of Gulf Coast residents. If you'd like to support Operation Blessing's Disaster Relief Fund, call 1-800-700-7000 or visit CBN.com. Up next, we talk with Tony Perkins of the Family Research Council about his reflections on his COVID recovery. And a programming note, next week, CBN News will carry the Supreme Court nomination hearings of Amy Coney Barrett in their entirety. You can watch our live coverage beginning at 9 a.m. Eastern, Monday through Thursday, across all of our CBN News platforms. Life is better with a good night's sleep. Get your free DVD or booklet of Protect Your Sleep as the world watches from the outside. It's a big diplomatic tug of war here in the Middle East. Go inside the story with Jerusalem Dateline. Israeli archaeologists are talking about a discovery that could change the thinking about the Temple Mount. Join CBN Jerusalem Bureau Chief Chris Mitchell and get the biblical perspective on the events shaping the world. What starts in Israel then ends up going to other places. Watch Jerusalem Dateline Friday night at 9.30 on the CBN News Channel. Life, it's meant to be lived fully. Jesus said it, I came to give you life, life to the fullest, life in your family, life in your finances, life in your body, mind, and spirit, life in your every day. At CBN.com, we're taking what Jesus said seriously. We're here to help you discover life. Life. Live it fully. CBN.com. Welcome back. In the past week, there have been more than 300,000 new cases of COVID-19, and that includes an outbreak believed to have originated at this White House Rose Garden event. President Trump suggested he may have contracted the virus there as well. Meanwhile, states like New York, New Jersey, and Maine are all preparing for a second wave as new cases are on the rise there. The good news, though, is that more and more people are recovering from the virus, including Tony Perkins of the Family Research Council, who contracted the virus back in July. 
Earlier this week, I asked him about his road to recovery. I was, it was like a really bad case of the flu. It came on as sort of feeling bad and, and I was uh, with fever, you know, the, 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 uh, the sweats and the chills for about three days. In the midst of that, did get tested because I thought I may have been exposed to it as I was doing a lot of traveling. And um, it, after that, it was just a weakness for about 10, 12 days and then uh, recovered from it. And we tried to isolate as much as possible in our family. Uh, my daughter's actually an ER nurse working with the, at the time, working with the, the coronavirus patients. So we're not sure if maybe that's where it came from or through traveling. Uh, but it's kind of gone through the entire family and, and now everyone is on the other side of it. And just recently I was tested, had the antibodies. Tony, you just mentioned that you tested positive for COVID antibodies. Some think that that means you're now immune. What did your doctor tell you about that? And are, are you or have you considered donating plasma to help others who are, are fighting the disease? Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm looking at that. We're looking at the research. And uh, in fact, we may issue a challenge to all of our churches and our network for those that have tested and have the antibodies to give the plasma uh, if, if, you know, we, we, we see that that is a very effective means. It's actually as a part of uh, John, the defense of this for the, the broader society is people get this, they become barriers to the spread of it. So it's it's actually good, and, and, and medical professionals are actually saying now, you know, we need to get out, we need to move around. Not only physically is it good for us, but psychologically what's happening to our country as we've been in this lockdown, isolation is not good for us. We're seeing an increase in suicide, drug abuse. Um, and so it's time to get back to a, a sense of normality in this country. You were at the White House, but your COVID experience was from earlier this summer. I'm curious, what has been going through your mind as you, you've watched what has been taking place over the last week or so? Um, a couple of things. Number one is, I think, again, we cannot stay in hiding from this. I mean, you know, those that are in compromised situations, immune systems, or they have underlying issues. We need to protect them. And so we need to encourage them not to come out to these events or, or not to, to really uh, socialize in vulnerable situations. And we need to take care of them. But we can't have everybody in hiding. We need to get healthy people really have to go through this. And I, I want to say this about the president. I was so... Um, you know, if I could use the word almost inspired and encouraged that the president said, look, it's, it's exactly what we've been saying uh, from, from the standpoint of saying to the church. He said it. He said, we can't live in fear of COVID. And that is so true. We cannot live in fear, and especially the church. This is a moment for us where we need to be leading. And quite frankly, I don't think we've done a really good job of it. And Tony, along those lines, FRC is holding an event called Freedom Sunday this weekend. How does all of this tie in together? And what's the ultimate goal? Now, we're actually doing this in California in a church, 8 p.m. Eastern time, Sunday night. We'll be in Calvary Chapel, Chino Hills. Uh, you'll be hearing from uh, pastors like John MacArthur, uh, Rob McCoy, who these pastors, Che on, pastors who have been fined or threatened even with jail time. We'll hear from some of the biblical scholars about the, the stand the church should take. Uh, Dr. Al Mohler will be joining us. Uh, Eric McTaxis will be joining us. And it's a challenge for us to stand in the face of this fear and live in faith. Again, making sure we take the necessary precautions, protecting those who are vulnerable. But we have seen, John, the effects of the church being shuttered for eight months, chaos in our streets, uh, the, the depression, the discouragement, the suicide rates increasing. It is time for the church to take this head on and stand with confidence in the face of uncertainty. Tony, I'm sure a lot of people will be interested in that. Tony Perkins, president of the Family Research Council. Tony, thank you so much for being with us today. Thanks, John. Good to be with you. Next on Faith Nation, Netflix facing backlash for its highly controversial film about children, but they're not backing down. We said on October 1st, 1961, history was made when a tiny station began transmitting the first signals of the Christian Broadcasting Network. CBN, the Christian Broadcasting Network. And now, a new era has begun with the all-new CBN News Channel. Just moments ago, the Iron Dome intercepted an incoming rocket right on the Gaza border. Administering in this area, spiritual warfare is definitely involved. 
a 24-7 news network, bringing you the news you want from a source you can trust. In Kenya, 40% of the medical services are actually provided by these Christian hospitals. Let's talk about the economy. Believers here are joining together to win people to Jesus Christ. All your favorite shows now in one place. Go to CBNNewsChannel.com to find out how to get the CBN News Channel on your TV all day, every day. CBN News. Life is better with a good night's sleep. Get your free DVD or booklet of Protect Your Sleep today. Life, it's meant to be lived fully. Jesus said it, I came to give you life, life to the fullest. Life in your family, life in your finances, life in your body, mind, and spirit, life in your everyday. At CBN.com, we're taking what Jesus said seriously. We're here to help you discover life. Life. Live it fully. CBN.com. And welcome back. Netflix faces felony charges for the controversial French film called Cuties. A Tyler, Texas grand jury indicted the streaming service for promoting, quote, lewd visual material against the peace and dignity of the state. But a Netflix spokesperson says the charges are without merit and they stand by the film. If guilty, the corporation could be fined at least $20,000. Well, the internet safety organization Enough is Enough is calling on the Department of Justice to investigate cuties. Enough is Enough president Donna Rice Hughes joins us now. Donna, great to see you. How are you? Good to be with you. Well, uh, you are calling for the Justice Department to get involved. Why do you believe that they need to be a part of this? Well, we initially called on the Justice Department to investigate on child pornography charges. And it's clear to us that uh, uh, Netflix, as well as the Cuties producers, are clueless about uh, child pornography and what constitutes child pornography. And when, when we saw this film, it's clear that there are child pornography violations. So to have a federal investigation and indictment on top of the Texas grand jury indictment sends a very loud message, not only to Netflix, but to other streaming platforms, that there is a zero tolerance policy against this type of content. And one thing that a, a lot of people may not realize is that Netflix is still defending their um, the film on the basis that this is a social commentary on the issue of the sexual exploitation of children. But what's so ironic, John, is that the, the very children that they are, are attempting to, to, to say are being sexually exploited in our culture, they are sexually exploiting these 12, 13 year old actresses by having them perform stripper type moves, gyrating on, on stage in skimpy clothes and even one actress actually is seen in a scene um, pulling down her pants and her underwear and taking a picture of her private parts and then posting that online. And so they have really gone over the top and this is simply unacceptable. And we're also calling on Netflix to remove this film from their platform. And, they, and if they do this soon, they may be able to avoid a federal indictment. Well, you can understand the backlash after that description there, Donna. Given your organization's focus on protecting children online, what are your major concerns with kids in front of screens all day now that we have the coronavirus lockdowns? Thank you for asking that question because it's so important. Kids have always been at risk when they're online because they have access to all the good and all the bad. And so criminals have always been using this technology. But with the kids at home more and doing virtual learning, we have seen skyrocketing cases of child pornography, for instance. And um, the incidences of kids sexting has gone up dramatically. Sexual predators and sex traffickers are even more active online because the internet is their primary tool to recruit and groom kids as well as to sell them and also and to Donna, sell women. 
real quickly, because we have just a little less than a minute left, I'd like to ask, how would you encourage parents to help protect their children without having to stand over their shoulders all day? Yes. Um, well, first of all, go to our website at enough.org. We've got five steps to mitigate harm during COVID, and it's right up there on our homepage. And I would also ask your viewers to please sign this petition um, calling on Netflix to remove cuties on a, and on the DOJ right. to investigate. And they can find Donna. that at enough.org as well. Donna Rice Hughes with Enough is Enough. Thank you so much for being with us today, and we'll be back right after the break. Life is better with a good night's sleep. Get your free DVD or booklet of Protect Your Sleep today. I'm Ephraim Graham, and this is Studio 5. Cruise with me as I discover the good things happening in the world of music, sports, television, and movies. The fact that Ryan Coogler was going to be directing the film, I knew that something special was going to happen. We'll chat with artists at the forefront of entertainment and explore the connection between popular culture and faith. I asked my pastor, I said, well, does that mean I'm supposed to be a preacher? He says, well, no, you already have a pulpit. Watch Studio 5, Wednesday night at 9.30. Remember for a moment what it was like to be a child. You believed every story you were told. You saw a world full of endless possibilities. What stories will the world's orphaned and at-risk children believe? We believe the Bible tells the only story truly worth believing. We believe that every child should have the opportunity to dream, the chance to take challenges and turn them into possibilities, the chance to stand on the promises of God, to recognize their place in the greatest story ever told. They have their whole lives ahead of them. Theirs is a world of endless possibilities. They are looking for a story to believe. We will tell them that story. Will you join us? Well, thank you so much for tuning in to Faith Nation tonight. We are out of time, so we just want to wish you a great weekend.